Let's just make a couple of points about successive interference cancellation with unequal power in the uplink. And this is particular for mobile communications like NOMA in 5G mobile communications. So here's our rate region, uh, rate one and rate two. We consider two users, the rate for the, each of those two users. And uh, let's uh, draw our um, typical rate region uh, if we had a lot of power coming from user two. So in that case, the rate region would look like this. So for example, this is the rate that you can get from the power that you have from user one. And maybe this user here is far at the cell edge. So let's say this is at the cell edge. So it's being received, but with a small power, uh, power one. Uh, which gives us a, uh, a, a value here of uh, log. So the capacity here uh, is log to the base two of one plus P one on in naught. Okay, and this one here is a close user. So it's close to the base station. Uh, and this one here uh, is of course the same thing, but with P two. Okay, now let's uh, think about what this means. So this is getting a low rate from the cell edge user and a high rate from the close user. And uh, we're assuming for this that they're transmitting with the same power. So by the time the cell edge user gets to the base station, it's got a small power being received. Okay, so what we would normally do and what we normally think about is uh, decoding the strong user first. And that's a common uh, understanding and, and some people believe that's the only thing you do in NOMA. So that would get you at this point here. So let's understand why that would be, because uh, this is the rate that you can achieve. You could send with uh, at user two, could send at a rate which is log to the base two, one plus power that it's receiving with, divided by the power from that's being received by user one, plus the noise. So this is the signal to noise ratio. And for as far as user two is concerned, uh, the signal being sent by user one is noise. It's noisy interference. Uh, so this is the way to do it. If, you, if you're decoding user two, where you're just treating user one signal as, as a signal you don't know anything about, so you're treating it as noise, uh, then its component contributes to the Gaussian noise uh, in the receiver, and, and so you can achieve this rate here. And if you did transmit user two at this rate here, then you would, in, in theory, in, in, uh, according to capacity, be able to completely decode it, which means you could ex fully extract it from the received signal, and then you would be left being able to completely uh, decode user one as long as they were sending at this rate given by here, given by their power, because now you've completely uh, correctly decoded user two and extracted it from the signal, and all that's left is a contribution from user one. And so therefore, this is the way to get to that point there. You receive this rate on user two and this rate for user one. And so this is, this is the strong, decode strong user first. Um, strong user first gets you here. Okay, but I want to make a, a couple of points here. And that is that it's not necessary to do this. Uh, you, you can do this, but it'll leave you at this point here. But it might be that your user one, uh, and, and what this does, I will make one point about this though, this gives you, gets, it allows user one to be sending at the highest rate that it possibly can. Okay, it's a long way away and it, it gets that, that further out there. You can't get further to the right in the rate region than this point is here. So if you do it this way, decoding the strong user first, you get the maximum rate for user one. But it might be that user one doesn't need to transmit at that rate. And that's certainly the case in multi-service type mobile networks, such as 5G. So let's say, for example, the cell edge user was a low data rate sensor node. And all it needed to do was to send a small amount of data in comparison to perhaps the user close to the base station might be a video based user who wants a high data rate. So in that scenario, you might not want to operate here. It might be good enough to give the cell edge user this rate here, just that amount of rate, uh, which is the rate that is, is here. It might be good enough for the cell edge user if it's a low data rate user. And this would allow you to increase the rate that you're gonna to give to the video based user if the video based user was, was close. Okay, so you, by operating at this point, you get more data rate to the close user 
And as I say, if they're a video-based user wanting high data rate, that's a good thing to do. And so you can achieve that uh, by decoding the weak user first. So if you decode the weak user first here, you will, give, you will be at this, uh, this point here. And like I say, it might be that that's good enough for that user if, it's, if it doesn't have high data rate demands for the service that it's running. Okay, and yes, it certainly is a bit counterintuitive because you would think that for this point here, uh, you know, the formula is log to the base two of the power for user one divided by power two plus n naught. And if, if power two is a big number uh, because it's close to the base station, it does seem a bit counterintuitive. I mean, this is a small number, this is a big number. Can you really decode that signal when there's a lot of noise? Well, the answer is yes, you can. Capacity tells you, the Shannon formula for capacity tells you that it is possible to have enough error correction coding uh, that you're coding at a low enough rate so that you can decode that user one signal even though there's lots of noise. Uh, and so it's not true that you always have to decode the strongest user first. So another point that I'll just make is another thing that you can do. So I'm just sort of wanting to make that point. And the second point in this video is, well, another thing you could do is if you did want to increase the rate for the cell edge user, then you could uh, tell the cell edge user to transmit with more power. Uh, and so what would that do on this graph? I just want to understand what that does in the graph. Well, certainly if it's the only one transmitting, it will move this point here to the right. So therefore we'll be getting further towards the right uh, if we transmit with more power. So we're going to move from this line here up to this line here. So then I just want to understand what happens to these points. Well, this line doesn't change because we haven't changed the power that we've got for the close user. So this line doesn't change, but what about this point? Well, this point is P1 divided by P2 plus N0, and if we've increased P1, then this point will move to the right. Okay, so this point moves to the right if we have increased power for uh, the far edge user. And what about this point? Well, this point is given by this and we've increased P1, which means that there's now more noise if you were to decode this one first, because P1 is now coming stronger. So therefore this number here goes down. So it's becoming down from that value to a lower value. Okay, so if we were to increase the power for our cell edge user, this, was, this would be how the shape would change of our capacity region, okay? And uh, just to uh, make the point here that, again, we can still be achieving these points out here, but we, this increase for rate for user one, the cell edge user, comes at a cost. And that cost is the interference to other cells. So the cell edge user will be the one closest to the neighboring cells. And therefore, if you do this and tell it to increase its power, it will be interfering with the neighboring cells more. And in this picture here, we haven't shown any intercell interference. And so that does need to be taken into account in a cellular network. So if this video has helped you to understand a bit more about successive interference cancellation and the ordering of the coding uh, and cancelling, uh, then give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the web page in the list below uh, where you'll find a full categorized list of videos on the channel.